Now our final calculation we're going to do, and for all the other calculations, we're actually going to use each, each calculation in the previous tutorials to calculate WAC. And that's why this is a long process, a complicated, complicated, it's one number, but it, it comes from many different sources. And for the sake of your project, you're actually going to have two WAC, weighted average cost of capital. You're going to have a weighted average cost of capital using the dividend growth model, dividend growth model, and you're going to have a weighted average cost of capital using CAPM model. Now what weighted average cost of capital, what the actual formula is, is we have cost of equity times weight of equity plus the cost of debt and then let's go ahead and add in 1 minus the tax rate 1 minus this is the after tax cost of debt so you want to make sure you're calculating the after tax cost of debt times the weight the weight of debt and then if your, if your company does have preferred stock, you're going to want to include that the cost of preferred, which is RP, times the weight of preferred. Now, we've already calculated the cost of equity, so let's, let's, uh, let's go ahead and do the first one for the dividend growth model, and then for CAPM. So let's create two different, uh, two different two different rows for this calculation. So the first, we're going to do the dividend growth model. Now, we've already calculated the cost of equity, so let's go ahead and fill that in so we can go back to uh, this formula or this sheet. So we want to do equals, we're going to refer back to this sheet. And so we have our dividend cost of equity, is this 11.92 for Microsoft? So we can just hit that, enter, so it's going to fill it in. Next. We're going to want to add, we're going to want to fill in our cost of debt. So we hit equals, we go to our bond, our bond cell, our bond sheet, and our after tax cost of debt was this. So we highlight that, hit enter. And in this case, we're just going to have zero. We don't have cost of preferred stock, and we don't, don't have a weight of preferred stock. Now, the other thing we have to really work on estimating is the weight. Now, where does this weight come from? Now the weight is how much of your company is financed by equity and how much of your company is financed by debt. Now the the uh, the weight. So you need to you need to calculate a total value of the firm and then take the percentage that is equity and the percentage that is debt. So what is the weight of equity? Well, that's simply the market cap. So you can figure out the market cap by a couple different methods. Most most free sources of financial information is going to provide it and it's in many different parts but it's also simply the stock price times the number of outstanding shares so if you can find the number of outstanding shares and you can find the uh, stock price which you'll always be able to find you are going to be able to know what the market cap is but also some some <coughs> some providers actually provide that for you so here within Yahoo Finance we can actually see uh, what the market cap is on a couple different ways. So the one way we just mentioned was number of outstanding shares, which is right here we have 7.66 billion, and we can multiply that times the stock price, which as of taping was 137.71. When I downloaded the data, it was 141. So it's a tiny bit different, or so that we take the multiplication times that, or where's the market cap? Or it could be here, oh there's the market cap. So the market cap, we can either calculate it ourselves or take the calculation from Yahoo Finance. In this case, it's 1.09 trillion. So that is our total value of all outstanding all outstanding uh, shares outstanding times the times the stock price. 
So let's go ahead and go back into our, we have to first, we have to try to figure out total value of the firm. Total value. So our equity was what? Our equity was one zero nine trillion. So let's see how many how many zeros? One, one, two, three, one, two, three. Let's see if that's a trillion. Million, billion, trillion. So that's the market value of our equity. Now the bonds, we need to know what's the value of the bonds. The bonds outstanding. Now again, there's a couple different ways you can look at this. Um, for the purposes of this course, we're going to do kind of a shortcut, and we can go to our, where is our balance sheet? So you do not want to use the balance sheet to calculate the, uh, the cost of debt, but to do the value of all the outstanding debt, you can use the balance sheet. So what is the value of all their outstanding debt? So we can go down here and look at their current liabilities and both their long-term and their short-term. And we can say that we can use this number. This number looks, it is 184, and these are, I believe, are in thousands. So it is, are these numbers in thousands? Let's see, uh, all numbers are in thousands. So always make sure you take into account what what uh, what your units are. So these, these numbers are not in, they're in thousands. So you have to add three more zeros to every calculation. So in this case, it's what? This is 184 million, but it's actually 184 billion. So we have our cost, that's our, all our, bond, all our, you know, we're, we're, we're taking a little shortcut, but that's all right. So it is 184 billion. Oops, I made the same mistake. That is 184 million. Let's see. No, well, that's right. So now we add these two together. So the total value of the firm is going to be, let's call this total equals this plus this. So that's the total value of the firm. Now you want to weight each one of these. You need to weight equity versus debt. So we take this, the total value of our equity, divided by the total value of our firm. So we end up with 85, about 85%. 86%, 85.56% uh, equity, and we do the same for our uh, bond, and we're obviously going to get something a little below 15%, but let's go ahead and do the calculation. So our, all our cells are dynamic, and this is a percentage, and let's add a few decimal places. So now we have our weights. We have our weight of equity, and we have our weight of debt. So all we can do is go in now, we have our weight of equity equals this. We have our weight of debt equals this. Now, we just follow our formula. Cost of equity times weight of equity plus cost of debt times weight of debt. So the first step is take cost of equity times cost of or weight of equity. And then we have cost of debt times weight of debt, after tax cost of debt. So both of these are percentages, and let's make them uh, a little bit more attractive. So we have a, a weighted cost of equity of 10.19, weighted cost of debt of this 0.23. So we take the sum of those, this, plus this. So we end up with a weighted average cost of capital for Microsoft using the dividend growth model, 10.438%. That is our dividend growth model. 
using the uh, dividend or the cost of weighted average cost of capital using the dividend growth model. Now to do cap M, we actually keep everything exactly the same except what? We only need to change one number. We only change our cost of equity using cap M, which was a little bit different. So we can go back to this cell, so we can hit equals, and we go back to our cap M. So we end up with 13%. Now you can do this a couple different ways. So we can uh, you can actually take a copy and paste of all of these formulas, or we can just do uh, we can just do it kind of one by one, but I'll just do it one by one to make it a little more uh, descriptive. Um, but you want to actually lock, so we actually want to, but we can do this just step by step. So our weight of equity is still this. <coughs> our cost of debt is still going to be this. So we have this equals, and you can take a copy of it, and you don't want to you actually want to take just a, you just want to take a copy of it. So you can just copy it, control copy, and then you just want to paste value. So you do a paste special. For those that don't know about Excel, uh, it's a very powerful tool. So you just want to paste the value so you don't paste the formula. And again, our cost of debt is going to be identical. Our weight of debt is going to be identical. So again, you can take a copy and you just want to paste value. So all we've done, the only thing that's different between the cost of equity using the dividend growth model and cost of, or weighted average cost of capital using the dividend growth model and weighted average cost of capital using the cap M model is that one piece of information. So you can actually use the same exact information from the previous estimate and we end up with the same formula to follow for cap M. So we end up, or weighted average cost of capital, which is we do it in two steps, so let's go ahead and follow the same exact way we did it before. You have cost of equity using the cap M times weight of equity. And then you have cost of debt, after tax debt, times weight of debt. And then we want to, this one's a little, I don't know why there are so many decimal places we don't need, but so we take those two together, equals this plus this. So this is our weighted average cost of capital using the cap M model. So we get a little bit different answers and that's expected. And, uh, but that is how you calculate the weighted average cost of capital using both the dividend growth model and the capital asset pricing model.